what's going on guys it's Nistro, and uh we are here well not physically here we are at ycs richmond it's a ycs going on this weekend it's it's been two weeks since age of overlord has fully released here in tcg and we had what was the name of the last ycs i i already forgot <laughs> the name of the last ycs because i didn't do a video on it i don't know why i didn't do a video on it so that's kind of my fault i've been a little busy but basically yeah so we had a ycs like rage age of overlord release weekend we had a ycs and rescue a simple spoils ended up taking that whole event lots of cool matches we had jeff l with exodia we had manadium take you know trip with manadium take top four and the final match was a uh, rescue ace merit match so Two weeks later, that event had like 1,900 people, and the cutoff was only top 32, which was kind of weird because usually it's like top 64 for an event of that size. If like if there was 50 more people that like attended the YCS, it would have been at top 64. So it, 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 the top could have looked completely different with you know another round in it, but is what it is. Um, I know, you know, uh, one of the members of ground game, I say Houston, he got cut off at 33rd place and it's not cause he didn't have enough points. It's like they were, when you have the same amount of points and there's a certain cutoff for like, for like top cut. So like top 32, there was like a bunch of people with 27 points coming out of the final round of Swiss. And it was like randomly selected who got put into top 32 and who didn't. So I think that's kind of goofy. They should have just done top 64 when it's like something like that but is what it is now there's significantly less people attending this event it's like 500 less people this one's only at 1400 as i'm recording this like the this live stream still going on like oh we got manadium and we got exorcist or oh we got dz on here the reason why i wanted to discuss round two is because a very uh, a very prominent deck that used to be big in the tcg has finally had something of a comeback I mean, you probably already know by the title, but Phantom Knight, Phantom Knight Adventure Horus Phantom Knight has come back. So PK Adventure, Horus Adventure, whatever it is you want to call it. Last time I saw this deck was when Artifact, not Lancey, I, I forgot the name of the one that stops you from summoning from extra deck, but dude, how could I forget this card's name? It, it tormented me for fucking years that that, that, that card still existed in, in the TCG and it just you just summoned it it didn't allow you to summon back from from extra deck and um yeah it was really broken with um phantom knight because basically what they could do is they could set up uh break sword and grave plus bardish plus dpe oh artifact scythe or artifact scythe basically what this deck was basically scythe turbo um last time we saw it like really relevant in the tcg and you know verde Aconda was still a thing and uh, Adventure Engine was, you know, was uh, out by that time. And uh, Punk just came out, so they, so some builds were using, were utilizing Punk. It, it's it's opening new new doors, new pathways for the Phantom Knight engine, because now Phantom Knights are allowed to pivot between um, summoning those level eights. King Sarcophagus is a great card, stacking up your graveyard. Um, not a lot of people are on Shifter now that Kashtira is. Uh, effectively uh, or now that the walking macrocosmos or the strongest walking macrocosmos that we've ever seen um since dark law has been banned um get graveyard strategies are making a big comeback tier limit um had made a huge resurgence right after um a rise heart got banned and now phantom knights slowly coming back in using horus using adventure um i know last tournament we saw like a lot of like bestial dragon link horse um resonator kind of stuff and now it's like there was some people playing phantom knight horus but we didn't actually see them on stream so now we get to see uh phantom knight horus on stream and his opponent is is a labyrinth player and so basically the way that this has started out so far i know i, have, I haven't been commentating on the game but um basically his his opponent like set three pass and then once it became the Phantom Knight player's turn, he resolved two of the Welcome Labyrinths. First the regular Welcome, then the big Welcome. So now he has uh, both his Silver Lady and his uh, Lovely Lady. I don't know which one's which. I think the Silver Lady is the one on the left and Lovely Lady is the one on the right. Um, I I'm still not completely sure how um, Labyrinth works, like which cards you should interact with. I know Silver um basically protects your back row and she can't be targeted until your back row is gone or something like that and then silver is when you activate a trap card you can 
um, pop a card either on your opponent's field or hand randomly. Uh, and now, so we we see the uh, PK player here. Um, he, he tries to use Imcity to get his uh, King Sarcophagus, and that ends up being Ashed, which is a kind of minus two. Like, using um, Imcity, like, you're kind of, like, um, making yourself really vulnerable to hand traps. But if it resolves, it's one of the most, it, it's a really, like, high risk, high reward kind of um, activation. Thankfully, he had Fenrir, so he was able to banish uh, the, the, the Lady Lovely. And it looks like um, Devin here, he didn't really care that um, his MC did not get to go through because he was using it correctly so as bait to make sure that his actual combo, his Phantom Knight combo, could resolve. And it looks like uh, Labyrinth had another hand trap. He had um, M Valor on the uh, Torn Scales. And so Torn Scales, what it would have done, it, it, it would have milled another Phantom Knight monster from deck to graveyard. But thankfully for Devin, he already had Silent Boots in hand, so that can just summon itself when he control Torn Scales. I think using Valor against Torn Scales is kind of weak because, worst case scenario, they can... Uh, we saw him discard the Ragged Gloves turn one, and then now it's turn two, and you're Valoring Torn Scales knowing that he can just banish uh, Ragged Gloves and mill another Phantom Knight, and then Torn Scales can just summon itself back out. So, kind of, kind of a low impact move, right? Um, because he could mill something like a, I don't know. Uh, what, what's the level three searcher to like? Uh, I think ancient cloak. I think he he could have milled that one and then kept going. But uh, we're gonna see him go into Cherubini here. And if you know anything about Phantom Knights, you know now his graveyard's pr pretty much stacked, right? So now he mills the cloak, um, and Cherubini gains a little attack. And that set card, um, that's a Daruma Karma Cannon on the Labyrinth side. He he said it this turn, and I'm not sure if he's allowed to activate it or not. I think he has to activate a certain Labyrinth card before he can activate it, like Ku Clock or um, one of the hand traps in, in Labyrinth. One of the IKEA furniture cards. He has to be able to resolve one of those to activate that set card. So. When I was watching this live, the, the, the commentators were talking about like, oh, you know, like if he has the this, this, the thing in hand, he will be able to activate this trap card. And if this, if that set card could be used this turn, I think it would pretty much like completely turn the game over to the Labyrinth player side. But we see him not be not resolving this set card at all, meaning I don't think he can actually use it, right? Because now he just summoned out a break sword. And once he summons out Breaksword, you know, like, okay, um, he's going to be able to destroy the back row. So if there was no way to resolve the back row, like, at all this turn, or if there was a way to resolve back row at all this turn, then he would have definitely um, did that before he got to the Breaksword. So now we know he has no other interruptions. I don't think he has Nibiru. He has one card left in hand. All he has is his two um, Labyrinth monsters left on field. So now we kind of get to go for broke. Uh, break sword, because it destroyed itself, it summons back two more Phantom Knights. Now, now they become level four. Um, he's going to banish Ragged Gloves to mill a Phantom Knights card. I don't know if it mills any card or if it mills a spell and trap, but he gets to mill Phantom Knights wing here. And so Wing is pretty great because um, basically it can banish itself to special summon any Phantom Knights monster from your graveyard, meaning he will get to revive um, the Break Sword that he just sent and get 2,000 extra damage on board uh, pretty much for free. Like, that that's... And now he's, like, doing, doing some calcs. He's going to overlay his two level fours. You get a little peek at his extra deck. We see him playing stuff like Zombie Vampire. We see SP Little Knight because it, it's so on theme. And then he's going to go into the Raider's Knight. Raider's Knight allows him to make Arc Rebellion. And Arc Rebellion right here is pretty much game. Basically, it detaches. It absorbs the attack. Well, it doesn't absorb. It, it, it gains the attack of all face-up monsters currently on field. But he's the only monster that can attack that turn. So, considering that, you know, Lovely or Silver Lady is like 3k. Um, 
Fenrir is like 24, Cherubini I think it's like 6,800, 1,200, I don't know. And then Ariane's like 16 or something. He basically, he gets to like, Arc Rebellion becomes like 10k, he gets to swing over Ariana, and that is, that is game. That is more than game. So, game one is over. Oh, and I just realized that was a QCR uh, Cherubini right out of the Rarity Collection. I've, I've noticed that because I've been watching these these matches and, you know, these, these guys are definitely flexing their um, QCRs and stuff from uh, Rarity Collection if you haven't got to opening Rarity Collection yet. It's a fun set to open. Like, I think if you want play sets of something, you buy singles, but if you just want to, like, have a little fun, I think it's it's a fun set to open because you, you never know what QCR you're going to pull and, and stuff and... It's like you get good value out of each box, I think, because there's value in the lowest rarity, there's value in the highest rarity, and there's value in the rarities like in between in the rarity collection. So I think it's a good box to open. I don't say that a lot about uh, about a lot of product. I, I've become a very buy singles or or don't buy shit at all kind of guy, but rarity collection is like one of those exceptions. Um, the last time I felt like a, a, about that like a, about a set was like dual devastator and i think like if they if they made a dual devastator for 2023 i think a lot of the cards in rarity collection would have been in it anyway like baron and um it's like it's a good disparity between like meta relevant uh, stuff like dual devastator had like ash and um it didn't have evenly it had like gamma seal it had uh yeah, I, I forgot exactly what those dual, dual devs here. I I know it had all all like the ghost girls. It had like a few good synchros like Black Rose and um it even had some more fringe cards. It had like spell canceler, which you know ended up not be it wasn't relevant the at the year Dual Devastator came out, but you know, Super Heavy used it. Um So Yeah, we're gonna see Labyrinth go first again. Uh and he's gonna start with uh I think that is still I think that is still Ariana. He's going to go for the Ku Clock. And I watch, like, Rorcalo's stream herself playing Labyrinth uh, for, like, two days straight. And I still don't <laughs> completely understand what um, Ku Clock does. I just know you can loop the absolute hell out of it using, like, your Welcome Labyrinths and um, its own effects. Um, oh, okay. So he was basically able to activate the Big Welcome the same turn because he used Ku Clock, I think. Is, is, is how that works. Um, I've never faced a labyrinth like IRL, so I, I'm I'm still like uh, I'm still not too familiar with the deck, especially when like I mostly paid attention to the game like earlier on in the year, like around the summer. I kind of like stopped playing the game a bit, um, but now that I'm like back into it, I'm like I just realized I've never actually dueled against a labyrinth deck. Um, except for on like Master Duel like once and that was it. So he got himself a full force virus. I, I, I believe that's that's what just happened. Um, and we get to see Ku Clock here. Uh, you can discard it, activate a normal trap that was set this turn. Uh, if you control a labyrinth, uh, if you control a labyrinth monster, it discard sent from your hand to the grave uh, to activate your normal trap card or labyrinth card or effect except labyrinth uh, something or except for its own effect and then it has another let me see what else it does. Um, just so. Well, this card is in your grave. Yeah, so. If a card is sent from your hand to the graveyard to activate a normal trap or your labyrinth card or effect, except Cool Clock, while this card is in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand or special summon it. Ah, okay. So this with the, the with the Stovey Torby. Because I know Stovey does like has the same graveyard effect where you can like either choose to summon it or like add it back to your hand. That's how they make stuff like Chaos Angel or like Muckraker to like revive some of their resources. But they can just add it back to hand and, and keep on like resetting their um like set their traps and then like be able to activate them. So that's kind of cool. And then like I, I believe Silver Lady is the one who like sets traps from deck after she summons herself. So this is Lady Lovely. She gets to pop a random card. Um, okay, hit the Water Enchantress, QCR. This dude's just flexing his <laughs> QCRs. Um, 
and that came in like Battles of Legend. That that came out like months ago. Crazy how the Adventure Engine got like reprinted. Like it used to be worth a lot like last year, and now it's, uh, it got like reprinted twice. Now like the whole Adventure Engine is like five dollars maybe. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Uh, so past turn he's using another big welcome or is he like did he reset the big welcome and then activate it once it became the opponent's turn like that's crazy it's kind of nutty not gonna lie and i think he's cha chaining his silver lady chain link two so silver lady summons itself because a trap card was activated that turn um and then big welcome's gonna summon a laver from deck and then return one to hand Maybe return is Ariana so he doesn't get OTK'd again. Alright, so he's gonna summon the summon the stove and then return the stove. Uh, all we see in PK's hand is Droplet and an Imperm, I believe. So Silver Lady's, uh, Lovely Lady's gonna go through. He's gonna hit number five. Uh, and he hit Ancient Cloak, wow. Two bad hits in a row. <laughs> this is a wrong deck to like, hit the hand against. I mean... Wait, it's still... It's still his turn, I think. It's still a Labyrinth player's turn, because how else would he have summoned this Soul Resonator? And then Soul Resonator allows him to search uh, any level 4 Lower Fiend, but he's stuck into summoning Dark Dragon Synchros for the rest of the turn. Am I crazy, or did he just use Big Welcome Labyrinth twice in the same turn? Maybe I'm crazy. Like, it looked like he activated it, put it to Grave, and then like reset it, then activated it again. Maybe just because I wasn't paying attention. Um, but I didn't realize his turn was still going. Like, <laughs> the Labyrinth can do all this shit. Uh, apparently. Alright. So, he's setting up his field, and it looks like he's finally past turn. Okay, activate right. Or maybe the Soul Resonator was during the opponent's turn, it's just um, there was some effect that allowed him to summon Soul Resonator. Maybe that's what it was. Alright, so, activate right. Because there's no way, like, he did all that in one turn. Like, he activated Lovely twice, and I know that has to be once per turn. There's no way they put in, they put an effect that said you can destroy a card in your opponent's hand and didn't make it that once per turn. So, he probably did all of that during his opponent's, like, draw phase or standby phase, and uh, Devin was patiently waiting for his turn to actually start, you know? <laughs> um, Alright, so we see right, we see Fateful hit the field. Um... And now we see Banish of Water Enchantress to search another right. I would have done that first, personally, just to see if he had anything for it, and then activate the right in hand. Because now it's like the right in hand's kind of useless, and, you know, um, it's, it's not going to get to do much. He's not going to summon a monster before resolving or activating Faithful Adventure to search a monster that mentions it. So he's not going to get the equip spell, he's just going to go straight into Griffin Rider. Maybe to bait out more traps. Um, and then he's going to drop the right that he just searched, which again, I personally feel he should have used Water Enchantress first to bait out anything, but that's just me. Uh, but the sequencing didn't really matter, it's, it's the same difference. Uh, so there we go for Griffin Rider. 
Uh, summon is successful. He gets to search the equip spell. He's going to go for Draco back. Um, still nothing on activation, or still nothing on search. Maybe something on activation of Draco back. Maybe he's going to Daruma Cannon, or... Okay, no, nothing on activation of, of uh, Draco back. Now he's going to use its effect, target um, the back row all the way on the right. Is that an imperm? Is, is he flipping up and down an imperm, bro? Like, come on. <laughs> Man, he got like 10 different interruptions, bro. I'm sure you could figure out which one you want to use. Uh, full Force Virus. This one tributes, and I believe this destroys monsters with 1500 or less attack. It's like the opposite of Crush Card. Because I know, like, Crush Card is 1500 or more, and then I believe Full Force is 1500 or less. If I remember correctly. So he has a, uh, what is it that he has in hand? He has a uh, Torn Scales, right? Yeah, so Torn Scales, would be, yeah, it is 1500 or less, okay. Because Torn Scales has like 400 attack. Um, so, cool. I mean. It really doesn't matter though, because he, he already has Cloak Engrave, and then he could banish Cloak at a... Uh, at Torn Boots, uh, or Silent Boots, not Torn Boots. Uh, he, he could add Silent Boots, um, and then because he banished Cloak, special summon out um, Torn Scale, and then because he's searching, it, it plays around like the Virus card, so it won't be checked by Full Force Virus. Which is like the easiest workaround for Full Force. As long as you don't get virus, like, or as long as you're searching and, and you're not drawing cards, like, virus cards are not that big of a deal. Um, when all is said and done. Because it only checks your field once and it only checks your hand when you draw. Or it only checks the draws. Like, it only checks field and hand when it's activated and it only checks draws after that. Now, we're seeing him on, like, Damitef, and one thing I noticed about certain Horus builds is that they were not on any of the Horus monsters that weren't, like, Imcity or, like, Happy. Um, I know you guys saw my, um, Ogdoatic video that I uploaded, uh, like, two days ago. And in that one, I was playing, like, one of each, but that was more of, like, a, like, a hybrid build. Like, that wasn't, like, what I was actually testing. I'm gonna be uploading another video that also uses Horus Engine pretty soon. And in that video, I, I only play two Horus monsters, Imcity and Happy. I don't play any of the other ones because they're bricks, right? Um, so it's kind of interesting to see um, Devin here on multiple, on some of the more like mid Horus monsters, I should say, like like Damitef. So we see him go for Breaksword. Um, Breaksword, he's going to chain the Imperm. And Devin is considering whether to use his Griffin Rider or not. Because by imperming Breaksword, he stops him from popping Breaksword with its own effect. And so that stops his, like, e extension, you could say. But if he uses the, the Griffin Rider preemptively and um, Devin has no other interruptions, this last trap card could be a complete blowout. So it looks like the Imperm resolves. Devin has no qualms with letting Imperm resolve here. We still have a lot of extension in the grave. Sword can banish itself. Or not sword, Fogblade can, can banish itself to summon one from grave, I believe. Like, I believe it's like Fogblade, Sword, and Phantom Knight's Wing that all have that graveyard effect to banish itself and summon a Phantom Knight from grave. Uh, Rugged Gloves can banish itself and mill one, so he can mill a, another extender. Here we're going to see him droplet. 
Uh, maybe target the lovely. Or target the Ariana. I guess target Ari- Oh, not target. But use it on Ariana. I think Ariana has some sort of effect when a trap card is activated. That he maybe hasn't used yet, so. Let's see where he goes from here. He's banishing Rite of Gloves to mill Phantom Knight's wing. And now he has two extenders in Grave. On top of Torrent Gale. I mean, on top of uh, si Silent Boost. So he's going to banish the wing, summon back Torrent Gales. And he's going to banish Fog Blade, summon back uh, Silent Boots. He's going to go for another Break Sword. He sure does. And let me guess and say Break Sword is not hard once per turn. It's going to effect double pop. That's probably why he didn't stop the Imperm, and now by not stopping the Imperm, Griffin Rider's still on field, and he knows what happens if this uh, Break Sword resolves. It pops itself. It pops itself, and it pops the back row, and then it'll summon the two Phantomites back from Graves of level four, Raider's Knight, Arc Rebellion, and I believe that's game because that's well over, um, well over 10k damage on field. Imagine losing the same way twice. Dude, like, this dude, like, literally soy fawned him. You know, like, soy fawned from Bleach, where she has to hit you in the same spot, like, the exact same spot twice <laughs> to uh, KO you. Like, this dude literally got the ex won the exact same way two games in a row. Um, no interruptions on, on Vaughn's side. And we didn't really get to see much of the Horus engine either. It's like M City got instantly negated. And I think, like, that's one of the things about playing Horus. Um, is that, like, your deck should not crutch around Horus. It should simply be a supplementary engine. I think that's the correct way to play it. And we can see here that Devin did not care that his Horus cards were, were negated. But if they did resolve, he would have had way more than this. He would have had way more um, extension and ability to play the game than what he has right now. But opening both right and, um, and Water Enchantress and a starter and an ancient cloak to that that you could discard it was it was kind of jover it was kind of jover before it even started um i feel like uh this labyrinth player he's not playing a lot of um blowout trap cards or he, he maybe he hasn't been setting them because i know like silver lady can like set some of your best trap cards from deck and that's kind of the point right like you set like daruma cannon or you set like terrors of, of like the overroot to like manipulate your opponent's board and I didn't see him doing a lot of that, so I'm I'm kind of unsure like what he was going for. Maybe he didn't think the PK player could do all that stuff that he did. But yeah, there we go. Phantom Knight is back and ready to go in 2023. You just pick yourself up an, an Avenger engine, uh, a few horse cards. Shit, you may not even need the horse stuff. Maybe just adventure package, um, and like a an SP, and you should be able to play the game from what <laughs> from the way this this went. You know, um, and this being a really diverse open format, we haven't seen a deck like uh, PK, as, as I said in the beginning, we haven't seen PK in like a long time. Like it's been a long time since I think like PK was even like talked about um, in terms of like its competitive viability. It's never been like a bad deck to play. I think like it's really just come like, it, it's, it's just been phased out of like popularity. Like you wouldn't see a lot of people playing it, but I don't think it's ever been like a bad deck. Other than when, like, a Rise Heart was at 3, but... Literally, if, if you were facing anything that wasn't Kashira, it probably would have done pretty well. It was it was just the fact that Kashira was just a little too oppressive with its uh, a Rise Heart at 3. And, you know, having to open something like a Book of Moon or, or like a Dark Ruler just to play the game, you know, it definitely lowers your um, viability, you know what I'm saying? So, understandably, it's good to see PK back. Um, back in the format um, It can definitely stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with um, maybe some of these more modern decks Labyrinth is still to be seen I still think Labyrinth is still of like a like you really have to know how to sequence and like play around what your opponent is playing And I don't think Vaughn knew how to play around Phantom Knight um, It just felt like his opponent was it, it felt like a uh, Devin here was allowed to do a lot of things um, that, like, Vaughn did not want him to do, 
when Vaughn should have been the one setting up the, the traps to stop him in the first place. So, yeah, that's been uh, Phantom Knight PK. Uh, I said Phantom Knight PK. A A Adventure PK, uh, Horus. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.